What do we know of God so far? That he's a guy who's willing to go to any lens and risk everything for the pursuit of the man who took everything away from him, right? That he's the kind of man who was born from the dregs of the dregs and the moment he found some semblance of camaraderie, some level of warmth within his heart in his cruel and unforgiving world, a man named Griffith came along and took everything away from him. Not only that, the man also branded Guts with a curse which made him and his beloved Casca the target of demonic apostles. They came at him in all shapes and sizes. Some were kind of hot, some were really weird, uh, phallic kind of individuals, and some were downright sinister, evil, and might even be the main villain controlling everything from the sidelines, I can assure you on that, I swear. But regardless of that one schnoz joke that I copied from real life Ryan, Guts continued to keep on moving forward. Even with the brand he was able to go above and beyond his abilities, challenging and winning against anyone and everyone that dared threaten him or Casca. He went up against a mad zealot priest who wanted to instill the word of God in people through brute force if necessary. He then took on a former warrior turned dinosaur apostle, a truly formidable opponent if you ask me. Then he took on a magical wizard man and finally he ended up fighting the silhouette of a man who was the impetus for a new awakening of the world. Though he had some help from an enemy, it didn't matter. Of course, the fight that I'm talking about is Guts vs Misty Ganishka. This whole description of Guts' fights just touched the surface of the kind of man that he is. I could go on for hours fangirling over Guts and the many fights that he's been in, but if there's one certainty with Guts, it's that he's a fighter, a warrior, and a struggler who, even when the chips are down, finds a way to get back up and fight the good fight. But our certainties in that very fact have changed. They've taken a total 180 and have made fans question Guts, in fact, the entire persona of Guts throughout the series. Chapter 375 of the Berserk manga shows a Guts that is broken in every sense of the word. Besides his hulkish frame, he's not the man whom we saw killing apostles like they were nothing but ants. Here was a man who's lost purpose in life and does not know what to do. When the Kushan navy chained him up, we don't see him react in any way, shape or form. He's just standing there, bound in chains. The Guts we knew would have killed each and every Kushan who wanted to have him bound. Not only would he have done that, but he also would have shrunk the entire Kushan navy that had the audacity to come near Roderick's ship. But here's the thing, to the viewers, and I'm sure there are so few of them, who read Berserk just to see Guts taking down enemies one by one, this might have been a disappointing turn of events. Like Guts, they've lost all purpose in reading the manga now. But for the fans who read Berserk for the story, they would know that this is actually a good thing. For the sake of full disclosure, I feel good that things have transpired in such a manner. Guts getting defeated by Griffith a second time works well on two levels. First off, it gives Guts time to relax. Now hear me out. Ever since the eclipse, have you ever seen Guts relax for even a minute? He's always on edge and has been struggling to make sure that he's somehow able to reverse the damage that Casca had endured at the hands of Griffith. He's taken up that responsibility and has also made sure that he has her protected in every manner possible. Since the conviction arc, he's made Casca his top priority and because of his dedication, he's found people who want to help him take care of Casca, a primary example being Farnese. He's even donned the physically and mentally taxing Berserker armor, all for the sake of protecting people close to him, not just Casca. But again, she's still priority number one. Using that armor and the stress that it carried with it has even caused his hair to turn grey. Guts has very well atoned for the escapism that was prevalent within him during the Black Swordsman arc, during the Black Swordsman arc owing to his actions during every other arc that came after it till the present one. Though he might not explicitly show it, Guts has been completely selfless in his goals. While the yearning for revenge is sort of a selfish act, the quest to restore Casca's sanity is indeed a selfless act. It's an act of love. While sacrificing himself to the Berserker armor, Guts has also inadvertently made Farnese, Shirake, Serpico, and Isidro stronger. He's prepared them well for the dark world that Griffith has managed to create. As for Casca, Guts' sacrifices have finally bore fruit. Casca, as the story goes, is now as sane as ever. Though a little weaker than before, she knows her surroundings and the effort that Guts has put in for her. It's for that reason that we see her trying to escape Falconia the moment she gains consciousness from her state of confusion and haziness. 
Being the woman that she is, I believe that it's now time for Casca to take in the reins and make sure to return the effort that Guts has put in for her. I don't mean to say this in a tit for tat or an IOU kind of manner. I mean it to imply the natural course of things as they are. As for Guts, his job is now finished. For all this time, he's been alone in carrying the burdens on himself and in my opinion needed this much needed breather. Should it have come in a better manner? Of course it should have, but it would betray the kind of story that is Berserk. The second level that this works on is that it gives Guts time to think and reflect. This is in tune with the experiences that Thorfinn went through after Askeladd's death. He would put so much effort into revenge that it became his life's purpose. When it didn't exist, his life lost all purpose and direction. He ultimately became a depressed farmer. As of this writing, Guts' world is shattered beyond belief and with no purpose or direction. He now needs to find a way to get out of the rut and come out of the other end as a better person and human being. That is Guts' only saving grace as of this point and might possibly end up making him strong enough to take on Griffith. I'm sure many of you in the comments would add a better swing on both of these swing on both of these opinion pieces. In the latter case, I can say for certainty that Guts, for the first time in his life, is not alone. He has members who are strong in their own way, and it's their efforts that would pull Guts out of this depressive hellhole. Sure enough, Shirke, Isidro, Farnese, and most of all Serpico were already strong before. But now they would have to up the ante to bring Guts back to his normal, or perhaps, new self. Only time will tell how Guts' journey would unfold, but it is an interesting turn of events. If you like the video, then do subscribe. Thanks for watching.